Greetings ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Educate. Uh, if you had watched our previous video on defining what is the atmosphere, you are at the right place. But then if you haven't watched that one, please try to watch that one first so that you can get more clarity as to where we are leading to in this video. So today we're going to be talking about the importance of the atmosphere. So let's look at what does the atmosphere do to us and how is it important how is it significant to our lives so the atmosphere protects us okay so it protects us that's the main point so from what does the atmosphere protect us is from the harmful ultraviolet rays from the sun so the sun releases ultraviolet rays of the sun so those ultraviolet rays of the sun are definitely not good for us so the atmosphere is needed okay so let's look at other functions of the atmosphere so it contains gases it contains gases that are essential for life so these gases are essential for life there are certain gases that are needed for us to live and those gases can be found in the atmosphere so they are contained within the atmosphere certain gases are contained within the atmosphere which are essential for our lives as human beings and then water vapor water vapor in form of clouds gives us rain and moisture remember in our previous video we talked about uh, the liquid part of the atmosphere which talks about the clouds which carry water so water vapor is the for vapor is just the form in which the water is carried in the cloud it's not really the same as the liquid water which we have so that water vapor gives us rain and moisture the moisture we find here and then weather takes place in the atmosphere so the basic concept of weather the basic control of weather and all that stuff takes place in the atmosphere so these are the uh four more important four main important uh main important points of the atmosphere exactly how is the atmosphere significant to us so now we look at this main point which says it protects us from harmful ultraviolet rays so these ultraviolet rays is what we're going to be talking about so how does the atmosphere protect us from the harmful ultraviolet rays what adapts the atmosphere to be able to protect us from that what gives the right for the atmosphere to do that so now we move to the con concept of the ocean ozone layer so we have got the ozone layer so this ozone layer you can see this is the basic structure of an ozone layer or this is a depiction of what the ozone layer is doing so you can see here there is a representation of these lines these lines these pink lines and red lines are representing the ozone layer which is protecting the earth from the sun's harmful rays supposedly the sun is here Let's take it that the sun is here and then it's releasing these rays. These dots are, repre are representing the rays. So these rays are harmful for us here on earth. Therefore, this layer is able to absorb them. This layer is able to take them in. This layer, which is called the ozone layer. So these, the, these ultraviolet rays from the sun are very dangerous. So the ozone is really significant in protecting us here at this point here he, this is the earth and then this is us being protected by the ozone layer over there so let's define the ozone layer and let's see what is exactly the ozone layer so the ozone layer ozone basically is a gas that is made up of three molecules of oxygen so a combination of three molecules of oxygen it makes up an ozone so the ozone layer contain is just a layer of ozone layer of ozone so it means it contains three oxygen molecules combined so the ozone layer protects the earth as it absorbs ultraviolet radiation so the ultraviolet radiation is absorbed in the ozone layer so the oxygen the three oxygens are able to absorb the upcoming ultraviolet rays or the uv rays so these uv rays are released by the sun so this is the molecule basically of the ozone you can see that we have got one oxygen two oxygen and three oxygen so this is the combination this is actually a compound of what of three oxygens this is 
O3. So this is basically ozone. So this is what is contained within the ozone layer. It is con it contains the ozone. So the causes of ozone depletion. So let's look at what is ozone depletion. So ozone depletion basically is the destruction of the ozone layer. So depletion, whenever you see the word depletion, it means it's the destruction of something. So here the ozone depletion is the depletion or, or the destruction of the ozone layer, maybe causing holes inside. So the causes of that depletion is CFC. So CFC is abbreviation of chlorofluorocarbons. So this is chlorofluorocarbons and carbons. Okay, so chlorofluorocarbons is just these chemicals which contains chlorine fluorine and carbon so these chemicals are really really dangerous and causes ozone depletion so we find the cfc's inside the acero sprays we find them in the refrigerators we find them in the air conditioners they and they release this gas into the atmosphere so the release of these gas cfc's will be responsible for the ozone depletion or the destruction of the ozone layer and then ozone layer becomes thinner and causes holes in the ozone layer so the ozone layer becomes thinner because these gases uh the air the the, the gases which you find in the acero spray the refrigerators the air conditioners and all of them release this gas into the atmosphere therefore the ozone layer becomes thinner it becomes thinner remember it's a layer of oxygen but then because of these certain chlorofluorocarbons they're able to make it thinner and causes holes to form in the ozone layer so there are holes that form in the ozone layer because of ozone depletion so let us look at the comparison of the ozone layer from 1974 to a predicted of 2054 so you can see here this is proven that in 1974 the ozone layer there was a lot of ozone concentration at this point you can see that there is this depiction of a red color that's depicting that the ozone layer there is more concentrated here or there is a higher amount of ozone layer here there's a high amount of ozone here i mean so let's look at how it is in 2006 you can see that in 2006 here this blue this blue this blue section it just represents the the earth basically the earth so it means that the ozone has been depleted from this red state to this blue state so it means now there is a low concentration or there's a low amount of ozone in the ozone layer for 2006 and then we go to 1989 actually i was supposed to go 1974 to 1989 but then let's go to 1989 so you can see that 1989 let's do a comparison between 1974 and 1989 you can see that here this part was uh the, this part in 1974 was highly concentrated with the ozone so it means this the, there's this red color showing that there's an absorption of the sun's ultraviolet rays but then here you can see by this little blue color that now the ozone is fading away or the, the ozone is starting to have the holes in it so this is what is predicted for 2054 so you can see that this is your 2054 year 2054 it is predicted that the ozone would totally be not there because there is no representation of the ozone in this diagram there is only the representation of the earth itself so this is basically the concept of ozone depletion over the years okay so because of ozone depletion a certain protocol called the montreal Pot protocol was implemented in 1987 so this was gathering of different countries to discuss the sustainable ways to reduce ozone depletion so since ozone depletion is going to be dangerous for us but then we're going to see how does it affect us as human beings how does it affect us so here the montreal protocol guide Gathered, gathered different countries to discuss the sustainable ways the ways that can sustain and reduce to reduce the ozone depletion so target was as follows so what did they target the target and the, the, the developed countries 
uh, must reduce the use of CFCs by 1995. So that is what they targeted. So they targeted that the developed countries must reduce the use of CFCs. Remember that CFCs are the main causes of ozone depletion. Therefore, the developed countries have got more access to CFCs. Like countries like the US have got many arsenal spray, they have got many refrigerators. So they should. They, 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 they should just reduce that the, the use of CFCs by 1995. So this was the target for the Montreal Protocol. And then the developing countries must replace all the CFC products by 2010. So this was targeted. So they must be replaced. So these this, 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 this CFC products must be replaced with the halocarbons, although it's not mentioned here. So there was halocarbons which were found to be better and do not harm or damage the ozone layer so the halo carbons were more safer and then the effects of ozone depletion why does ozone depletion why, why did the montreal protocol uh, why was the montreal protocol implemented is because the ozone depletion have got effects on us as people because the, 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 the receiving of the ultraviolet rays here on Earth is dangerous for us. But then in what way is it dangerous? So let's focus on that. So the effect on people of the ozone depletion is skin cancer, number one thing. So you are at a high risk of getting skin cancer. Reason being, if the ozone is depleted, so there is there is uh, a high amount of ultraviolet rays that are coming to the Earth and they will damage your skin causing the skin cancer and then sunburn we'll have sunburn because the ultraviolet rays of the sun are hot therefore if not absorbed by the ozone layer they're gonna burn us here on earth and then we have got eye cataracts in people and animals you know when you look at the when you look at the sun usually you actually cannot see for a moment so those eye cataracts can occur worse because now the ultraviolet rays are just coming through and not being absorbed by the ozone layer so we can have the eye cataracts in people and also in animals and then it can weaken the body's immune system so the body cannot fight diseases so the body will not be able to fight diseases since the immune system uh, the system of the body to fight its own di its, its diseases on its own will be weakened by the continuous receiving amount of the ultraviolet rate in re, 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 um, ultraviolet rays in the Earth. So the effect on plants and marine. Now we have looked at the effect on the animals or, or on us. I mean, so the effect on plants and marine life, it disrupts photosynthesis. Remember, the photosynthesis is just an ability for a plant to produce its own food, general, in general terms. So it disrupts the photosynthesis process because remember, the photosynthesis uses radiant energies. Therefore, if UV, if you, if that, if those ultraviolet rays are, are highly concentrated here on Earth, they will disrupt the radiant energy needed for photosynthesis. So it will disrupt photosynthesis or the ability for plants for green plants to produce their own food it also kills phytoplankton in the sea and disrupts marine ecosystem so it damages phytoplankton we will talk about phytoplankton some other day but then it is found in the sea and it disrupts the marine ecosystem the marine life basically talks about the animals that stay in the water or the aquatic animals so the crop yields get less cotton soya beans rice and beans and peas so certain certain temperatures and certain heat is needed for growing certain plants therefore the crop yields will get less because there will be a high concentration concentration of the sun because the ultraviolet rays are continuously coming to the earth and they will be damaging our plants so thank you for watching stay tuned for the next video